This is the sixth meeting of criminal law. Let's turn to another classic case, Regina versus Prince. Prince is charged with the crime of taking an underaged, unmarried girl away from her father's care without his permission. He appealed from his conviction. On the appeal, the defendant wanted to raise as a defense his sincere belief that the victim was above the statutory age. The jury had found this belief to be reasonable. The appellate court, as the trial court had, demands to know, so what? Prince appeared to be asking the court to read language into the statute that would require the Crown to prove that he knew the victim was under the age of 16. These words are not there. And the question is whether we are bound to construe the statute as though they were, on account of the rule that the mens rea is necessary to make an act a crime. Whosoever shall unlawfully take any unmarried girl, being under the age of 16 years, out of the possession and against the will of any person having the lawful care or charge of her, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Culpability language is absent. We don't see the word maliciously as we did in Cunningham and Faulkner. The adverb unlawfully is not a term of culpability. The word unlawfully simply means unless some other law to the contrary is controlling. Prince's appeal turns on one particular clause of the statute, which says, under the age of 16 years. This does not refer directly to any act by the accused, nor to any result brought about by his conduct. It is a type of element that the Model Penal Code terms an attendant circumstance. The issue in Prince comes down to this. Should the statute be read in such a way that the prosecution must show that the defendant was culpable as to the attendant circumstance that the girl was under 16? Here's another way to look at the case. First, let's collect the separable elements we find in the statute. The prosecution has to show that the accused took the prosecution has to show that what the accused took was a girl, not a boy, not a horse. The prosecution has to show that the accused took an unmarried girl. In Victorian times, this conduct could only be approved by the consent of the father or other guardian. Reflecting this attitude, the statute requires the prosecution to show that the accused took an unmarried girl out of a guardian's care without proper consent. Lastly, the statute requires the Crown to show the accused took an unmarried girl under the age of 16 without consent. There is no question that Prince, the accused, did all these things in the circumstances. He took an unmarried, underage girl out of the care and custody of her legal guardian without getting proper consent. Case closed? Not so fast. Aren't we forgetting the doctrine of mens rea? Let the light bulb symbolize mens rea. Elements that carry a culpability requirement go inside the light bulb. Elements that do not bear a culpability requirement stay out. The prosecution has to prove culpability as to all the elements that go into the light bulb. The prosecution does not have to prove culpability as to the elements that remain outside the light bulb. A mistake provides a defense if, but only if, it disproves culpability. Baron Bramwell allows that culpability has to be shown as to certain of these elements. Pursuing that thought, we can anticipate that the court would allow a mistake defense if the evidence showed that the accused believed the victim was, say, not in his wagon. If she had hidden there, 
he would still have taken her, but not culpably. Suppose the accused reasonably believed the victim was not a girl at all, but a boy. The prosecution would have to show culpability as to that element. Now suppose instead that the victim, in her eagerness to escape her household, had hired a professional actor, without her boyfriend's knowledge, to pretend to be a minister in a sham wedding ceremony, or to be her father, conveying his blessing upon their elopement. These mistakes should be exculpatory if the not married element and the without consent element belong within the culpability light bulb, as surely they should. Now we get to the issue in the case. If we were writing a brief or an exam essay, we would do better to cut right to the chase, the under 16 element. Does it go in or stay outside? How are we to tell? Baron Bramwell's majority opinion keeps it out, but how can he tell? If you or I had been in Prince's situation, how could we have told prior to acting? Baron Bramwell states a principle that can be applied to any criminal statute that is unclear about culpability. If what the defendant knew he was doing is immoral, mistake about other elements cannot exculpate. Judge Brett dissents. Judge Brett agrees that there is a principle involved, but he states it differently. In Judge Brett's view, if what the defendant knew he was doing is criminal, mistake about other elements cannot exculpate. Except for one single solitary word, the two principles are identical. For Baron Bramwell, what matters is whether what the accused knew he was doing was already immoral. If what he knew he was doing is immoral, and never mind whether the defendant agrees that it is immoral, then culpability need not be shown as to other elements. For Judge Brett, what matters is whether what the accused knew he was doing was already a crime. Here, it is irrelevant whether the accused knew it was a crime to do what he did. If what he knew he was doing is a crime, then culpability need not be shown as to the further elements that make it a more serious crime. Let's apply these principles to the offense Prince is charged with and see how they lead to different results. Bramwell and Brett agree that culpability has to be shown as to these elements. They go into the light bulb. The problem element is the one we focus on, the age of the victim element. The Bramwell approach asks, is it immoral to do what the accused knew he was doing? We might disagree, but Bramwell takes the further step of judging it to be immoral to take an unmarried girl away from her father without the father's consent. This leads Bramwell to say that culpability need not be shown as to the age of the victim element, and to conclude that Prince's mistake about that, though reasonable, is immaterial. The Brett approach is crucially different. For Brett, the question is whether what the accused knew he was doing is, whether he knew it or not, a crime. Brett finds that it was not illegal in England for the accused to do what he knew he was doing. Therefore, Brett would require the prosecution to show that the accused was culpable as to the element needed to make what he knew he was doing into a crime, that element being the age of the victim. Those are the clashing principles in the Prince case. We have to ask, can either the Bramwell or the Brett approach work in general? In our next installment, we will search for an answer.